I've had some questions about the Crosley Model 52 radio. It is a regenerative circuit and actually quite a very interesting radio. It has three AUT1A tubes and I have labeled the physical parts here all the way to the left is what's known as a book capacitor. It's a variable capacitor. And to the upper right of that is the movable tickler coil. Below that is a five position tap coil. And to the right of that is the on and off switch. And you can see that it also has two filament rheostats. The one that's in the middle that varies the filament voltage of the first tube. The other one on the right varies the filament voltage of the last two tubes, which are audio amplifiers. And we also have an earphone plug. This radio was produced in about 1924. Here's a look at the inside of this radio and how the tickler coil moves back and forth closer to the tapped coil. And over here we have the book capacitor. And of course you can see why it's called the book capacitor because it is hinged at one end and opens and closes like a book. On the right, the part that looks like a fuse is actually the grid leak resistor. They're typically 1 meg to about 3 meg. And below that, in parallel with this grid leak resistor, is a capacitor. This radio has one more capacitor, and it's pretty well hidden. It is in front of the tapped coil, right behind the Bakelite panel. I drew this wiring diagram of the Crosley 52 and let's go through how this circuit works. The first tube does a lot of work. Now when you have this tuned to a radio station using the book capacitor and the five position tap coil, that signal goes through the RF bypass to the grid of the first AUT1A. The grid leak resistor there, that is the DC bias for the tube that makes the tube function, but the signal goes through the RF bypass capacitor and it gets amplified and goes through the tickler coil and as we saw that tickler coil can be moved closer or farther away, which varies the amount of feedback. As we follow this path over to the right and down, we see that there's another bypass capacitor. The function of this capacitor is to supply the path or to complete the path for the RF energy. Without that capacitor, the RF energy would be bunched up at the top of the primary of this first audio because RF cannot go through that audio transformer. Now this first AUT1A tube is also doing something else and that has to do with the filament and also the grid. It also detects the audio from the RF coming in from the radio station. It changes it into audio and since it is impressed on the grid it also amplifies that. Goes through the tickler coil but the audio 
is such a low frequency that it has nothing to do with the feedback anymore. It goes through the primary of the first audio transformer. The secondary of the transformer applies this audio to the grid of the second tube which amplifies it and if we had an earphone plugged in we'd be listening there and if we don't then it is applied to the primary of another audio transformer and its secondary applies the audio to the last audio tube which is usually connected to a horn speaker. The first circuit in this radio does quite a bit of work. It tunes to the radio frequency, sends that RF to the grid which gets amplified also can vary the feedback uh, via the tickler coil. It also detects the audio from this RF and also amplifies it. And then from that point, after the first audio transformer, the rest is audio. This is the tag that's on the inside of the lid of this Crosley 52. I have supplied a link to this wiring diagram if you would like to download it. Thanks for watching.